Hello everyone, welcome to another limited color palette video. So today we are going to color this sketch. By the way, I have a drawing tutorial for this sketch as well. If you want to check that out, just visit the link in the video description below. These are the three colors that I'll be using today. I have Daniel Smith Mayan Yellow, Schmink Translucent Orange, and Daniel Smith Prussian Blue. Mayan Yellow is PY223. This is a nice warm yellow, and the color looks pretty transparent. This paper that I'm using, this is Indigo Art Papers and this is 100% cotton paper. Next we have Schminker Translucent Orange PO71 Now this pigment is the same pigment that is used by Daniel Smith for their transparent pyro orange. And lastly, we have Prussian Blue, a pretty warm blue, PB27. And now let's create some color mixes using this limited color palette. Mayan Yellow, mixed with a little bit of translucent orange. This is a very warm orange, I mean this mixture. So let's mix with a little bit more translucent orange. Actually, this doesn't look very red to me. The version from Daniel Smith, it's more reddish. This is translucent orange on its own. And let's mix with a little bit of Prussian blue. This looks kind of brown. So I've added a bit more Prussian blue here. Let's see what happens when we add even more Prussian blue. It's like a dirty green. And this is Prussian blue on its own, mixed with a little bit of Mayan yellow. Maybe let's add a bit more blue and a little bit more yellow. And this is more yellow with less blue. I don't really like this mix here because I did not use enough yellow. Let me put more yellow and less red and see how it looks. Just a tiny bit of red. Just for comparison, I'm going to put Daniel Smith's Transparent Pyro Orange here. This is also PO71. So you see this red, I mean this orange, it's very red. The reason why I wanted to use Schmink Translucent Orange is because I thought it's going to be as red as Daniel Smith's version, but as you can see, it is not. It is more an orange than a red, while Daniel Smith's Transparent Power Orange is more of a red than an orange. And now let's mix the three colors together to see what sort of grays we can get. We have Mayan yellow here mixed with a little bit of translucent orange and then a little bit of Prussian blue. It becomes green because we have too much yellow here. So let's neutralize this by adding a bit more translucent orange. More red and more blue. Let's see what happens. more green let's see what happens when we have more blue and a little bit of red so Prussian blue is a very dark color so this is sort of like the intense version of this I don't think I can get a pretty nice neutral tone with these three colors let me dilute this and take a look The swatches have almost dried, so let's take a closer look. I like Mayan yellow, and this is a very nice warm yellow, and it looks pretty transparent. The downside to this color is, according to Daniel Smith, it's not that light fast compared to other yellows. Schmink translucent orange is also very nice, and it's very transparent. This is a very warm orange. This is Prussian blue, PB27, looks very nice as well. 
very transparent looks a bit similar to French ultramarine but I would need to compare this with ultramarine side by side to well be able to see the real difference these are the various mixtures we can get using these three colors I like the orange here it's really nice just a bit warmer compared to this but not as warm compared to translucent orange on its own and when we have translucent orange mix with Prussian blue we get browns we are not able to get any purples or violets in this uh, with this particular palette so that would be the limitation and for the greens it's not bad this is sort of like a lime green a very yellowish green it's like a color that I would use for a lemon that is not ripe here with more blue it's more greenish so this is what we get when we mix the three colors together it can be a bit muddy but you still see the individual colors showing through as long as you do not mix them completely on the palette before you apply them to the paper so I let this mix on the paper and I think it it's all right you can still see the individual colors and there is some beautiful granulation going on so we can see some textures here and this is the granulation from Prussian blue and this is what happens when you add a lot of blue and red and translucent orange together I guess you can get a neutral tone you just have to add a lot more water all right let's paint I'm going to wet the sky first so that I can paint it with Prussian blue and let the blue fade into the white of the paper this is 100% cotton paper so you should be able to handle watercolor very well so now I'm going to add a little bit of Prussian blue for the sky this blue is very different from the blue that I see in my reference photo the blue in the reference photo is more like sky, sky blue but this is pretty nice as well and there is very nice granulation because of the texture of the paper next I'm going to paint the yellow lines on the road so there's one that goes here let me paint this a bit thicker so that later on when I cover part of it with the black I can still see the remaining lines since I do not have a real red I have to use translucent orange to take the place of red you know what I'm just going to paint this whole thing in this shape and then later on I will use my white gel pen to write the stop here as well here and here there is this flag here this is the Singapore flag next we'll mix the green so we have dark green here and bright green here so for the bright green I'm going to use a lot of yellow and less blue this part here this is in sunlight so we have this yellow green and on this side here we are going to use more ultramarine for the darker green and now I can and now I'm going to paint the shadows for the buildings so I'm going to use a scrap piece of paper to test my mixes because earlier on I realized that it's very difficult to mix a neutral a nice neutral that I like I wasn't able to get the neutral gray that I want using these three colors so no matter how I mix the neutral tone will either be blue or green or just brown so I have decided to add transparent pyro orange to this limited color palette so this is the gray that I am actually looking for this is Prussian blue with transparent pyro orange so using this mix I'm going to color I'm going to paint the shadows
I actually love to mix grays using transparent pyro orange. So this is the part where I have to be careful not to cover the yellow. This part here is tricky, so I'm going to use a smaller brush. Maybe even smaller than that because it's very tricky. It's very challenging to get into the small areas. Let's see if I can draw a very thin line within this yellow. Some shadows here. And some for the building in the background. And now for the next layer of shadows, which is actually just going to be black, I will mix using transparent pyro orange and Prussian blue. But before that, I want to use this red, red light color to paint this signboard to make it more red because this orange is, um, I, don't, I don't like the orange. All right, this shape. It's starting to look like a circle and a stop sign. Anyway, let's mix the black using Prussian and transparent pyro orange. So this part here will be very dark, a bit too thin there. So let me just pick up the paint and it picks up pretty well. I want the contrast between the trees and uh, this stand here, the shadow areas here. Let's pin the shadows here very quickly and then we will try and fade it. All the black light colors, all the darker colors are mixed with transparent pyro orange and Prussian blue. We have some shadows for the trees here. This car here, it's not easy to paint with this brush. Notice how the color is blending into the, into the back because the paint behind is not dry yet, unfortunately. So we are going to see if we can sort of rescue that. I'm going to make this place a bit darker because the shadow from the trees here are on the road. I want to make the underside of these areas a bit darker. I was actually thinking of painting these window panes here with a brush but it's going to be very difficult with the brush, so I'm going to use this fountain pen instead. This is the Pelican M200. Basically, I need these dots here to be bigger compared to the dots that I drew earlier. So this is the completed sketch that I painted using this limited color palette plus transparent pyro orange which I added later on because I didn't have a proper red. I wasn't able to get the gray that I want. So yep, this is how it looks. Translucent orange is nice. You can use it on its own but it's definitely not a replacement for a red. And it is actually for this reason that I prefer to use transparent pyro orange over translucent orange. But um, I know some of my friends, they like translucent orange because it's a very beautiful color, no doubt. This 100% cotton handmade watercolor paper is able to handle watercolor really well. I really enjoy painting watercolor on this paper as well as drawing on it. 
So you can see that the colors, they are able to diffuse very softly. Wet on wet techniques on this paper works very well. So with this limited color palette, you can get pretty dark darks, mostly because there is Prussian blue. Mine yellow is a color that you can use straight from the tube as well. It's not that glaring. So this is the shadow tone that I painted using Prussian blue and transparent pyro orange. I let the colors mix on the paper so that I can still see the individual colors. Then we have the bright green under the sun. So for the roots, I also use Prussian blue and transparent pyro orange. I probably should get an opaque marker and opaque color marker to draw things like this it's very challenging to paint little details like this especially if you need to reach into those tiny areas those sharp corners very difficult very challenging for me so this limited color palette is indeed very limiting which was why i had to add transparent power orange in the end Orange and blue will give you a brown, yellow and blue will give you a green and when you mix these three colors together, you're going to get some green-brown thing going on. It's very challenging to mix a pleasing neutral tone, which is why red is needed to make this palette more versatile. By the way, if you guys are interested to get some paint, I'm selling some of the excess paint that I have to mix space to get more paint to test and to feature on my YouTube channel, especially in the limited color palette series. So you can help me out. If you are interested, you can get some paint from me. The link is in the video description below. The list of colors that I have available for sale are in the link in the video description below. Check it out. All right, so that's all for today's video. I hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.